All right, this is an elegant appetizer for a dinner party. Easy to make in advance. Try. Remember, if you like the video, subscribe, gives us a thumbs up, and ring the bell. Well, for this tomato pie, the first thing we need is good tomatoes. <laughs> I wish I lived in New Jersey. Have you ever had New Jersey tomatoes? They're amazing. Florida tomato, not so good. I don't get it. We are the third largest producer of tomato in America, and we got crappy tomatoes. I went to three stores today, tried to find some good tomatoes. It looks good, right? Yeah, it looks good, until you cut into it. So, I hope you're gonna get better tomato than me, yeah? My three store, my, I couldn't get any. So here we go, folks. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the core. We're gonna cut them in slices. It's important when you buy the tomatoes for this pie to make them the same size, and I make it easier. And then we're gonna cut them about the same thickness, all right? First thing you do when you cut a tomato is you remove the core of the tomatoes. Right there, I'll tell you if the tomato is good or not. <laughs> and, uh, and this one's not so good, but I don't have a choice. So look, I take the, the top off of the tomatoes and this I save for my stock. I save everything, I don't throw anything away. So now I gotta cut the tomatoes. I love this knife, it's a Wusthof knife. It's, uh, it's called an uh, Offset Deli Slicer from Wusthof, it's fabulous. You have one of those, you'll never pick up another knife to cut of tomatoes, uh, peppers, anything, vegetables, it's fabulous. You can get them on a website, they're fabulous. Uh, look guys, tomatoes, cut the slices, keep this for the stock. Now we got a yellow tomato, only one yellow tomato. I take a second mortgage on the house for one tomato. <laughs> Ridiculous, 550 for one tomato. But you'll see, it makes a big difference. So we remove the core the same way than we did before. But now we're not gonna do something, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna cut it in half. You're gonna see why in a minute. All right? And we're gonna keep the other half um, when we make another pie. First thing we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a fry pan, we're gonna put some beautiful basil olive oil. Another product you can find on our website is fabulous, basil olive oil. Literally, basil leaves are crushed with the extra virgin olive oil. It is amazing. Remember, at the end of the day, friends, you're only as good as the ingredient you're using. Use good ingredient, you're gonna make good food. Use crappy ingredient, good luck making good food. <laughs> All right, so we got the, the pan going with the olive oil. We try to keep as clean as possible. We're gonna take our tomatoes and we're gonna lay them out. On top of the tomatoes, we're gonna put a fresh breakum. We got a recipe for that, we'll send you a link to make it fresh breakum. You don't wanna make a fresh breakum, use whatever breakum you want. But you have to have a breakum because the tomato gonna to release so much water, then if you don't put the breakum in there, then your tomato dough is gonna be uh, um, soggy. So you gotta put some kind of break on. I make this fresh break on, I use that same one for my macaroni and cheese, I use it for my fish, I use it for a lot of stuff. It's easy to make. Check the link down there too, so you can see the video. On top of the break on, we're gonna put some Avadi cheese. Avadi cheese. On top of the Avadi cheese, we're gonna put caramelized onion. Caramelized onion. This right there, folks, you gotta make this. This is amazing. We gotta, we're gonna put a link also for a video. We, we, we made a video for this. You gotta make this. This is amazing. This is like, okay, now I'm gonna reduce the heat. I don't want it to be hot anymore because I don't want to burn my finger while I'm in there. All right? And I'm gonna put my tomatoes. They don't need to be that hot, so don't worry. They're gonna cook in the oven. Matter of fact, it's a little too hot. You don't need it that hot. Hide the ugly tomatoes. <laughs> I gotta go to New Jersey, get tomatoes. I have a friend of mine that lives in New Jersey. Every time he goes there, he brings me back a case of tomatoes. Oh, it's so amazing. I don't know what it is over there in New Jersey. For all of you out there that are lucky people that live in New Jersey. I understand it's maybe because of all the dead people in the ground. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I gotta be careful. Uh, here we go, folks. Look, look at this, look at it. Put a tomato right there, right? Make sure they're tight to each other. You see, you see the way I'm doing them? I'm putting them very tight, very tight, right? And put one more, what do you think? One more, one more. <laughs> I like when I ask you, what are you thinking? You're like, what is he talking about? Oh okay, yeah, look, 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 so far so good, right? And all of this right there, we save it for the stock. Eh? We don't throw it away, we don't throw nothing away. Eh? Clean our board so we're nice and clean. What are we doing next? We take this tomato right there, this a half a tomato that I got, and we're gonna put it right there. Because you see what's gonna happen, you're gonna love this. 
What's gonna happen? Oh, yeah, 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 I lost the knife. <laughs> What's gonna happen is I'm gonna put all the stuff on there. The last ingredient I'm gonna put in is gonna be the pie dough, right? Then I'm gonna put it in the oven. I'm gonna cook it, and when the pie dough is golden brown, we're gonna flip it. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky you're home, because that's sometimes it's dangerous. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to flip it, right? And, and then what happened, the bottom of the pan is not going to be the top of the pie. That's why I'm doing this guy right there. You see what I mean? All right, so now, salt and pepper. You can't forget salt and pepper. Remember, folks, when you're making something that's different layers, you got to put salt and pepper. You can't just put pepper on the top and, and think that the pepper is going to come down. By itself, it's not doing it. All right, so here we go. Salt and pepper. We're looking good. We're looking good. Now, we're going to put the bread crumb. Fresh bread crumb or put whatever bread crumb you want. Okay, I'm using my fresh bread crumb. You'll see when you test it, then it is quite delicious. You're, we're using fresh bread crumb. We have the, uh, the recipe on there. But use whatever you want. All right, look. Put, pack it in. Really, really good. Pack it in, pack it in, pack it in, pack it in. See the way I'm doing it? Let me tell you something. You're going to make this tomato pie for your family. They're going to think you're a chef. All right, that's good. Let's clean up. Now we're going to put a cheese on there. So far, so good, right? So let's say you don't have avati cheese. You can put provolone. You can put Swiss cheese. You can put uh, whatever makes you happy. Swiss cheese, the problem with the Swiss cheese is got the string in it. And you know what I like about the Avati cheese? I don't know why they do it, but it's, it, it's round. And look, look, see the way it fits? It fits perfect. Eight to ten slices, which is usually how you can buy the Avati cheese. You can buy it just about everywhere, I think, anyway. I, mean, I don't know about everywhere, but you can find it. There we go. I, I should have put it a little tighter over there. See? Right there. And we put the one in the middle. All right? Make sure it's all covered everywhere, right? Now... Now we're going to put a caramelized onion on top of it. This right there, friends, is a recipe you have to learn to make, okay? Because let me tell you something. You serve a tomato mozzarella with a caramelized onion. You serve a, a, a fish, like a, I love making a yellowtail snapper. I put the caramelized onion on top of it and I just bake the fish like that. I also love to take a New York strip. Cook it in the oven or cook it on a grill, it doesn't matter. When it's almost ready... I take the steak out of the grill or out of the oven. I put a little bit of caramelized onion on top of the steak. Then I take a little bit of blue cheese or a little bit of goat cheese. And I finish cooking the steak on top of the caramel with the caramelized onion on top. Put it on a veal chop. Put it on a pork chop. Put it on, um, like I said, the oil. Rub it on your body. Do whatever you want. This is amazing. No, no, I, I promise you. This caramelized onion makes... The dish, you have to make this. This is amazing. And you know what the beautiful thing is, friends? You can freeze that. Yep, 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 yep. You can freeze it for a long time, 17 years, approximately. Yeah, take a year or two off, maybe. <laughs> you can freeze it for a long time. So you make a big batch. I, I, like I said, we're going to put a link on it so you can make it. I didn't want to put it in this recipe because it takes too long. Otherwise, the recipe is going to like 38 minutes. You see? Look at this, look at this, look at this. I'm telling you, folks, this, this, this is amazing. This is like very sexy. Oh, yeah. This is very sexy. Look, you got to make it nice now. Don't go out there and be sloppy on me. Right? You got to be nice. See, look, look. I want the whole thing to be covered. And you can say, why is this so important? Because you're going to get a slice. And if you don't cover the whole thing, right, you're going to get a slice. And you're going to get the one who doesn't have the onion on it. You know what I'm saying? You got to be perfect. Remember what I say, try to be 100% good. If you're 100% good, if you try to be 100% good and you screw up, you're still going to be in the high 90s. Make sure your oven is preheated at 400 degrees. You can make it a pasta dough, a pizza pasta dough. You can make it a pie dough, you let it rest. It's very important to let it rest. I made another, another uh, recipe for the pie dough. You can watch it. I roll it and cut it to the size so you can put it in. Okay, and it's very, very simple to do. All you got to do is take your pie dough, make sure you roll it a little bit bigger than your fry pan, right? A little bit bigger than the fry pan. All you got to do at this point, look, friends, just like this. You don't want to make your own pasta, uh, pie dough? Just buy it. There's some really good uh, pepperish farm out there. It's a good dough. I think um, Pillsbury is a good dough. There's a few good dough out there. Look, look. 
Look how simple that is, friends. Make your own dough or buy it already made. Look at this. Very simple, right? All you got to do now is take that whole fry pan, pop it in the oven, 400 degrees, 375, 400. But most dough you cook at 400, eh? Put it in the oven. When the dough is beautiful, golden brown, all you got to do is flip it. Really, really simple. We're going to do it. We're going to wait until it comes out of the oven. Okay, we're going to get that pie. I can smell the whole kitchen smells fabulous. That pie dough is ready. All you got to do is just want it kind of like golden brown. You don't need to be too... Late. You, uh, you want to get one of those uh, extra large towels. You get those at the Hilton. They got them. So, <laughs> so when the dough is golden brown, you know, it could take... Depends your oven. You know, you're going to cook at a 400, right? Depends your oven. Uh, it could take 35, 40 minutes to get a beautiful golden brown, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a plate that is big enough to fit in my pan. This fits perfect. Then I am going to take the towel and I'm going to tight it really nice and tight. Make sure there's no movement between the plate and the, and the fry pan. And be careful because if you're not careful, it happened to me one time. I was flipping it, right? And, I, and the handle got caught in a cutting board. The fry pan went this way, the plate went this way, and the tomato went this way. So be careful, right? You lift it up, you do one of them first, very important. And then you go one, two, three, four. Whoop, here you go. Oh, mama mia. So now, you breathe carefully. You do another one of those, just in case. Just in case, okay? And you hope, then you put it off, and the tomato pie is good underneath. If you don't do one of those, it's not going to work. Come to Papa, okay? Here you go. You can feel it when it comes. If you lift it up and the fry pan is heavy, that means it's not. You're in trouble. Oh, here we go. God bless America. Check it out. Check it out, friend. God bless America. Is that a beauty or what? That's a beauty. We're going to fix up the place nice and pretty. You know what I like to do? I like to put some goat cheese on it, too. So we're going to put goat cheese, and then uh, and we're going to put a little bit of chopped parsley. You could put a, a basil chiffonade, and we're going to serve it with a aged balsamic vinegar and a pesto oil. That's beautiful. It's very simple. So we're going to put some beautiful goat cheese in there, and you know what I like to do with the goat cheese? I like to put it in the refrigerator for a little while. You can even put it in your freezer. So... It's, uh, it's easier to grade, otherwise you'll have a tough time doing what I'm doing right now, you see? You'll have a real tough time to do it. All right, this is good. Just like that. You don't want to put too much of it, just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to put just a little bit of chopped parsley on it. Just a little bit of chopped parsley. Very, very little. You know, sometimes less is more. Eh? Don't go putting too much stuff on there. You can put a bit of cracked black pepper as well. But that's it, just very little. That's all we need. We don't need to put anything else. Just like that. And um, we're going to clean it up and we're going to plate it with some 28 uh, year old balsamic vinegar and a pesto oil. Okay, so today I'm going to make a, I'm going to plate this thing. I have some pesto in here. Then we made a little pesto, basil pesto. And I have this beautiful basil olive oil. Beautiful basil olive oil. And what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to mix a little pesto in here. Right there, just like this, right? Little pesto, you can make it, you can buy it, you can make it, it's very really simple, right? And we'll put a little bit around the plate. Very little, you don't need to put a lot, just a little bit. And then I got a 28-year-old balsamic vinegar that we're just going to put just a little bit around it. Very, very simple, right? And then we're going to take a slice of this beautiful tomato pie. And we're going to put it right on the plate. And right there, my friends, you guys are gonna wanna make that tomato pie. Oh yeah, what a, God bless America, this is the tomato pie. Here you go, my friends. This is the tomato pie. 